Danny's on the subway. It looks like he has a gun. Ariana takes a seat next to him. She tells him that he doesn't have to go through with this. He wants to carry on. They spot the target and follow him. Ariana tells Danny she's going to go around the other way and cut him off. Danny prepares himself. They trap the target. Danny pulls his gun and freezes. Ariana yells to him, shoot. Danny can't snap out of it. The guy runs. Ariana takes the gun from Danny and begins to shoot. She catches the target in the shoulder. She goes after him. Danny snaps out of it. He picks the gun up and begins to run. He runs into a house and is met by Yizak. He gives Danny money and a passport and tells him to go find his father. As Danny prepares to leave the house, he hears police sirens. He exits and gives himself up. Criminal psychologist Rhea is called in to talk to Danny. They want to see if he's a serial killer. Ariana and landlord Yizak have gone missing. They believe that Danny knows their whereabouts. Rhea begins her interview. She wants him to start with how he got into the orbit of Ariana and Yizak. Danny explains that he met them in his junior year of high school, 1977. Back then, his home life wasn't great. His mom, Candy, had remarried. He did not get along with his stepfather, Marlon, at all. He had also suffered the loss of a twin brother. At school, he only had two friends, Johnny and Mike. One afternoon, while attending a party, he spotted Annabelle. It was love at first sight, or at least infatuation. As Danny was enjoying a quiet moment away from the party, Annabelle approaches him. She asks him if he wants to get high. I'm sure he would have wanted to do anything as long as it involved her. He says, sure, and then she asks him if he has a joint. He doesn't, so she says she'll give him a rain check, maybe later. As we say in the country, she's got his nose wide open. Danny returns home. He's stopped by his stepfather, who wants him to hang out. Danny doesn't appear to be interested, as hanging out with his stepfather probably means something bad. Danny notices that someone has moved into the ghost house. At this point, they don't tell us why it's called the ghost house. Rhea interrupts Danny and asks him if that's where he first saw Ariana. He tells her no, that's the first time that he saw Yizak. Rhea is not being subtle in trying to find out whether Danny knows the whereabouts of Ariana and Yizak. She's blowing it. Danny gets back to his story. He tells how his two friends and him first approached Yizak. They introduced themselves, and then Yizak told them that he was opening up a boarding house. Innocent enough. The boys are in need of money and come up with a plan to flip marijuana, but for that they need some front money. Danny steals $100 from his drunken stepfather. He also steals his ATM card and his password. He gets the money and their plan moves to the next stage. The boys go to the park to meet Angelo. Angelo is a name that they've been given of someone who can supply them. Indeed, Angelo is a drug dealer but he does not make the transaction easy. After making the deal, he intimidates the boys and sends them on their way. The next step is selling the weed. Danny thinks that this will be difficult, but Johnny has a plan. Apparently, he knows of a network of weed heads, and he manages to sell all of the product in one day. Danny wants to make good on the rain check with Annabella to smoke weed. He approaches her and her friend Eden after school. Eden is a real cock block, and she doubts that Danny even has marijuana. Well, the principal doesn't doubt that Danny has marijuana. He approaches Danny and tells him to open his locker. Apparently, Eden told her boyfriend that Danny had drugs in his locker, and then they snitched him out to the principal. To Danny's surprised, the principal opens the locker and can't find any marijuana. The principal turns on Eden's boyfriend, the supplier of the information, and drags him out of school. Johnny tells Danny that he knew of the snitch and removed the weed before the principal could get there. Danny meets up with Annabelle to smoke. They have some small talk and then Annabelle presses him to make out. Well, if he wasn't crazy about her before, this sent him over the moon. He goes home and paints a portrait of Annabelle. He puts the portrait and a joint in an envelope and waits for her at school. But instead of Annabelle going over, Eden meets him. She tells him that Annabelle no longer wants to see him and that their previous interaction was a big mistake. She then slaps the envelope out of Danny's hand. Well, the joint fell out of the envelope and the principal happened to pick it up. He asks Danny if it's his and Danny breaks out running. 
Danny goes home to a voicemail from his stepdad blaming his mom, Candy, for taking money out of their bank account. Then as he goes outside, the snitch boyfriend and his other thugs chase after him. They surround Danny and begin to kick his ass. Just then, Yizak appears out of nowhere. He pimp slaps the boys and saves Danny. As he's making his way back into his house, he stops and tells Danny to come in and clean himself up. Danny dusts himself off and enters the house. It is now the first time that he met Ariana, and at this point, Danny decides to stay with Yizak and Ariana. After this incident, Danny just stayed with Yizak. Once again, Rhea interrupts Danny and asks him where is Ariana and Yizak, and he still claims that he does not know. Then she asks him what really happened to his twin brother. End of episode. Rhea enters Yizak's house. It appears to be empty. She finds the notebook of Danny's sketches in the fireplace. We're back to the interview. Rhea asks Danny about the gun. She was under the assumption that it was Ariana's gun, but Danny tells her that it was his. He got the gun to protect her. We jump back to right after Danny got beat up. Yizak tells Danny if he wants to stay there, he's gonna have to handle his stepdad, who's outside yelling. Danny goes outside and tells his stepdad and his mom that he's going to be staying with Yizak. His stepdad starts shit-talking him until Yizak comes outside. Yizak punks him out and sends him away. Danny's mom is worried, but he tells her that he's gonna be okay. She's concerned, but seems to accept it. Yizak tells Danny that he's got house rules. No sex, no parties, you know, none of the good shit. Danny has his first real conversation with Ariana. She tells him that Yizak has left some things behind for him. On the desk are GED books, Education First Kids. Danny asks Ariana why is she there. She said, like himself, Yizak helped her out of a jam. We flash forward. Danny tells Rhea that Ariana was a night person. Some nights she would get home, go to her room, turn on the music, and start crying. She was a real mess. Danny tells Rhea that he lived there about three years. How did he pay rent? He made money from the weed business. Danny tells her that he was happy there. They were like one little small family. One evening, he bumped into Annabelle at the grocery store. She was in college at that time. Danny invited her to a house party. Don't worry, the coast was clear. Yizak wasn't there. He travels a lot. Danny also invites his business partner slash buddy Johnny. The party kicks off and Ariana joins in. Annabelle arrives and teases her attraction to Danny. That damn no good Eden was also there. So Danny and Annabelle get some alone time. I'm thinking my boy is finally about to get it in. Annabelle asks him to kiss her. Ariana swoops in for the cock block and steal. She and Annabelle start making out while Danny's just sitting on the edge of the bed looking stupid. The next morning, Annabelle's acting like everything that happened last night was no big deal. At this point, Danny's balls have gone from blue to purple. Then Ariana asks him if everything that happened last night was okay. Hell no, it wasn't okay. But Danny being easygoing says it was. Maybe because she was feeling a little guilty, Ariana asks Danny to hang out with her. They go get burgers and then go to a movie. As they exit, some dude is flagging down Ariana asking her to stop. It's clear it's someone she doesn't want to talk to. When Danny inquires about the guy, Ariana goes off on him and says that they're never going to be good friends. The next scene is Ariana in a club. She's getting hard pressed by a chick at the bar. As the two ladies make it out to the dance floor, they're interrupted by a dude. This dude is no stranger to Ariana. The two have chemistry together and take it to the dance floor. Then they take it to the restroom for some moaning and boning. As they're cooling off on the couch, old girl from the bar squeezes in between them. Ariana starts making out with her. Well, this angers the dude and he pushes both of them on the floor. He and Ariana begin to argue and both of them are thrown out of the club. He professes his love and Ariana storms off. Ariana returns home. She tells Danny that she needs his help. I'll be damned if Rhea didn't interrupt him again, asking if he knows where Ariana and Yizak are. She just won't stop. Then we get a scene that confuses me. It's Ariana walking in a flooded basement, and there's dead bodies there. End of episode. Rhea tells her cop buddy about her breaking and entering into the boarding house. She shows him the sketches that she found. He wonders if they're all Danny's victim. They really think this little dude is a serial killer? 
Danny tells Rhea of an encounter with Ariana a week before the shooting. They're at a diner, and Ariana explains some of her mental trappings. She goes cold when someone matters to her. She tells how a friend of her dad's sexually assaulted her. He then shares with her that his twin brother killed himself. These two are really being vulnerable with each other. Ariana tells Danny that she would do anything to make her rapist disappear. Danny goes to Johnny and tells him that he wants to get a gun. Danny and Johnny show up at Angelo's apartment. Remember, Angelo is the drug dealer from before. Well, Angelo has a gun and Danny has the money, but Angelo doesn't want money. He wants sexual favors. Angelo and Danny bargain about what he will do and what he won't do, and they compromise down to a hand job. Well, I guess a hand job inside his apartment isn't freaky enough. Angelo takes Danny out. The two walk the street and Angelo pulls Danny into a construction site. At this point, Angelo changes the deal. A hand job isn't good enough. He wants that head bob rob. Well, Danny, buyer beware. All of a sudden, Johnny comes around the corner like a white berry buns and knocks Angelo out with a two by four. Danny picks up the gun and runs like hell. They both escape to the subway. Side note, if this is what it's gonna come down to to get access to a firearm, I think we might need to slow down on the whole gun restriction thing. Just saying. Danny back at the house. He tells Ariana that he's got a gun for her. This kid is stupid. He just acquired a gun for someone who's mentally unstable. Ariana does that thing that someone who's never held a gun before does. She grabs it and points it like she's some tough guy in a movie. Eventually, she gives the gun back to Danny and tells him that she doesn't want it. The next morning, Mike wakes up Danny and reminds him that he has a date with Annabelle. At this point, Rhea stops Danny and asks him if it's often that he forgets shit. But anyway, Annabelle and Danny meet for their date. They go kite flying, and then it begins to rain. They return to the house and Annabelle gets out of her wet clothes. Annabelle first discovers Danny's drawings. She loves them. She encourages him to do something with his talents. The two begin to make out, but I don't know whether he got it in or not. The glass breaks and someone's in the house. It's Angelo. Danny tells Annabelle to be quiet and get into the closet. As Danny goes to engage the intruder, Yizak grabs him. Angelo hears a noise coming from the room. He enters and grabs Annabelle from the closet. As Angelo is dragging Annabelle, Yizak attacks him. He takes his baseball bat and begins to beat him with it. Angelo's middle name must be Baseball because he's constantly getting batted around. Yizak beat the piss out of Angelo. It was fucking disgusting. Yizak points a gun at him and makes him run out of the house. Annabelle is looking at this wondering what in the hell has she gotten herself into. Danny tells her that it's safe now. She rightfully jumps up and runs out of the house and tells him not to contact her again. Frankly, I think she should have waited a few minutes because Angelo's probably still on the outside of the house pissing himself. Yizak is mad with Danny that he brought a gun into his house. He wants him to leave. Ariana cops to the gun and Yizak wants both of them out. Things are bad and Danny has nowhere to go, but they're not bad enough to go back with his stepdad. As he's packing, Ariana tells Danny that Yizak is going to allow her to stay. She then gives Danny his gun and tells him that she still wants him to go through with their plan. Danny is telling Rhea that the plan was just to scare their target. We go back to that day when Danny froze. Turns out that the target was his stepdad. That's why he couldn't pull the trigger. Rhea asks him if he doesn't think it was a strange coincidence that the target was his stepfather. Maybe this whole thing was a setup. Danny then tells Rhea that this whole thing was them wanting him to find his father. We go back to Yizak giving him the passport and money. And then we see Danny on a plane. End of episode. I'm confused. The show jumps around quite a bit. It's kind of hard to know where you're at in the timeline. That said, I think there's something there. It could go either way. This could be a good show or a bad show. Am I invested in any of the characters? Not really. I think Danny has been stupid. Ariana is crazy. She's got her reasons, but still, she's crazy. Yizak, I'm not sure what to make of him. Up to this point, everything he's done has been heroic. But I gotta believe since the police are so interested in him, He's doing something illegal, but I'm interested. I should say more than I'm curious. So my curiosity is going to get me to watch the next episode. I'm tentative about it, but I'm in.